Shukri Walker has given the FBI a written statement describing how she allegedly saw the pair at Tramp nightclub in Mayfair in 2001. Earlier this week it was claimed that Ms. Walker who was 28 when she is said to have seen the Queen TMS favorite son is willing to testify against him in Ms. Jufri TMS ongoing civil case. This evening her lawyer Lisa Bloom admitted that her client was unsure of the exact date. She told The Telegraph, she doesn't remember the exact date. She does remember the year but most importantly, as it was the only time in her life she's seen a royal in person, she remembers seeing Prince Andrew as it made a big impression on her. Ms. Jufri is suing the 61-year-old royal for unspecified damages through a New York court for significant emotional and psychological distress and harm. She alleges that the pair had sex three times. Andrew has vehemently denied all her claims and told BBC Newsnight in 2019 that he has no recollection of ever meeting her. The news emerged as it was reported that Andrew TMS legal team could soon outline his response to the allegations. The two sides are set to meet for a pre-trial hearing scheduled for November 3rd. Despite arguing there was no merit to the case launched by Ms. Jufri, who claims she was a sex slave of Andrew TMS late paedophile friend Jeffrey Epstein, the Duke was ordered to respond to the allegations by New York Judge Lewis Kaplan. It is expected both sides will agree scheduling for any potential trial to take place or whether the case against the Duke is dismissed entirely. Should it go ahead Ms. Walker could be called to give evidence. Describing the evening, she said, he, Andrew, looked like he was having a great time. And he was with this young girl who was close to my own age, perhaps even a bit younger than me. She was with a friend who has allegedly corroborated her version of events. Yesterday Judge Kaplan gave both parties until October 22nd to submit a proposed schedule, including plans for the discovery process and depositions. As actors from the upcoming James Bond movie struck a pose for the photographers on the London red carpet on Tuesday night, flashes went even more erratic when four royals made their entry. Gracing the No Time to Die premiere, Prince Charles, Camilla, Prince William and Kate Middleton had a royal family reunion right in front of the cameras. Kate, wearing a golden regal gown from British designer Jenny Packham, was seen greeting Prince Charles with a kiss on the cheek and a quick embrace. The four of them have reportedly been closer than ever since Harry and Meghan decided to take a step back from their royal duties and move to California. Charles is known for spending time with his grandchildren George, 8, Charlotte, 6 and Louis, 3. To the extent that Middleton herself tends to call him Grandpa. Back in July, lip readers told Cornwall Live the Duchess greeted Charles by saying, Hello Grandpa. How are you? They then shared a private conversation. The exchange took place at a garden party hosted by the Prince and attended by the Royals and Prime Minister Boris Johnson in Cornwall. According to Kate, her father-in-law was still very involved with his grandchildren throughout the different lockdowns in 2020. Time has definitely been helpful for Charles to adapt to his son and daughter-in-law TMS new role in the monarchy since their wedding. Back in 2011, the Daily Mirror reported claims that Charles was worried the couple's glamorous image would have overshadowed the worthy work of other senior royals. Royal author Philip Dampier told The Mirror, Charles felt overshadowed by Diana and now it seems he feels overshadowed by their son. Some people may think he is jealous. I have always felt that as soon as William got married, Charles would feel sidelined. From that moment people would be less interested in what he has to say on issues such as the environment and architecture if, on the same day, Kate is wearing a new dress. Last week the BBC broadcast Prince Philip, the royal family remembers trademark, which saw members of the firm pay tribute to the Duke of Edinburgh, who died on April 9th. The program was initially made to mark the Duke TM's 100th birthday on June 10th. Senior members of the royal family spoke about Philip in glowing terms including Prince Harry, despite the rift that has grown between the Duke of Sussex and his family in recent years. Surprisingly, Philip TMS son Andrew, was also included despite his ongoing New York legal battle, 
and the scrutiny he has faced from his affiliation with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Andrew TMS documentary appearance came days after the lawyer of Virginia Roberts Dufry claimed legal papers regarding a civil sexual assault case involving Ms. Dufry were issued to the Duke. Ms. Dufry is suing Andrew for allegedly sexually assaulting her when she was 17, though the royal has strongly denied the allegations and is currently residing in Balmoral. The prince has consistently denied the claims, and told Newsnight in 2019, it didn't TMT happen I can absolutely categorically tell you it never happened. I have no recollection of ever meeting this lady, none whatsoever. Pod Save the Queen is hosted by Anne Gripper and features Daily Mirror royal editor Russell Myers. Mr. Myers claimed that Prince Andrew was pompous as ever in the BBC documentary commemorating Philip. He said, Andrew pops up, being pompous as ever. Everyone was really quite heartfelt. I think William always carries himself well, Harry came across well. He added, Andrew TMS, only contribution really was I remember being in the castle, or the palace trademark. Everything was dropped in too. Remember I TMM a Prince trademark basically. In the documentary Andrew spoke about the impact of Prince Philip on the Duke of York TMS daughters, Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie. He said, my children had the most amazing relationship with their grandfather. He then recounted his own memories of the Duke, adding, my earliest memories of my father was him reading stories to us here at the castle. He taught us how to swim, he taught us how to play badminton, he taught us all sorts of sports. In another segment Andrew discussed how organized his father TMS personal study was, by making the unconventional comparison to the bridge of a ship. He said, his study was rather like a bridge of a ship, because the bridge is very well organized in the sense that everything is in reach. We all do the same things, things are arranged around you, but he did it in a more exacting way than you or I would do it. He appeared in public for the first time since outside a church service in Windsor in the wake of his father TMS death. He told reporters that Philip TMS death was a terrible loss and that the family were rallying around the Queen. To subscribe to Pod Save the Queen go to your normal podcast provider. Princess Charlene, 43, posted the video to her Instagram account, times to coincide with the Monte Carlo Gala for Planetary Health, and offered her support for the event. The video appears to have raised more questions than it answered, however, with the royal now absent from Monaco for more than five months amid mysterious health problems. The video starts with text, saying, wishing Prince Albert II of Monaco Foundation, sick, and Princess Charles in Monaco Foundation for the evening's fundraiser, a successful and magical moment. With all our gratitude, HSH Princess Charlene de Monaco. The next frame shows Charlene's head, bejeweled in a tiara, appearing to emerge from water. The caption then reads, As I was born of the ocean so the ocean was born of me. I present to you a piece of both. The image was taken by photographer Vanessa von Zitzewitz and published for the fundraising project, but is undated and believed to have been shot when Princess Charlene was still in Monaco. The video was widely interpreted as an attempt by the princess to show she remains attached to Monaco, but it appears to have backfired, drawing even more attention to her absence. The Figaro newspaper called the message enigmatic, while Elle magazine said it was mysterious and the Times said it raised concerns. Charlene left for South Africa where she grew up more than five months ago, for what was initially expected to be a brief trip to work with her foundation. Earlier this month, she was rushed to hospital when she collapsed, due to a severe sinus infection, an aide said. The princess was said to be in a stable condition after the incident, but the hospital would not confirm the details of her treatment for confidential reasons. However, the mystery surrounding the situation has led to rampant speculation that her marriage was breaking down, and she would not be returning to Monaco. Charlene was last seen in Monaco in January, with many speculating the Mornegosque royals were splitting up. 
She told South African Radio that she was remaining in her home country for medical reasons, saying in July that she cannot force healing though this did little to quell the rumors. He said, she didn't TMT leave Monaco in a huff. She didn't TMT leave because she was mad at me or at anybody else. She was going down to South Africa to reassess her foundation TMS work down there and to take a little time off with her brother and some friends. He said the trip was only supposed to be a week-long, 10-day maximum stay, and is not due to Princess Charlene going into exile. He insisted it is absolutely just a medical problem. However, the royal did acknowledge that he should have addressed the rumors about marriage issues sooner, but explained that he had been concentrating on taking care of the kids and had assumed the speculation would pass. Prince Albert added that his wife was ready to head back to Europe, though no date was mentioned for her return. The family then managed a trip to South Africa to visit Charlene which she posted about on Instagram, but she missed her children's first day back at school in Monaco.